27 for each pair of standard cell potential and electron stoichiometry values below, calculate a corresponding standard free energy change in kilojoules. All right, so we have two values here. One is going to be the standard cell potential, and the other one is going to be the electron stoichiometry value. This number, the 0.434 volts, that's always a cell potential. A cell potential is always measured in volt. So in this case, your cell potential is always linked to volts and it's always going to be an E cell. Now, since we are talking about a standard cell potential, we're talking about an E notch cell. Anytime that you see that degree sign in the upper right hand corner, that means that you're doing standard, you know, conditions. The end value then has to go along with this electron stoichiometry. Now, what does this end value mean? Well, remember, usually N means moles. But since we're talking about oxidation reduction reactions, cell potentials are always redox reactions, this N value goes a little bit deeper. It actually tells us the amount of moles of electrons. And specifically, it's the amount of moles of electrons that are being transferred from the oxidant to the reductant. Now I say to myself, okay, well, I have an E cell value. I got an N value and they want us to find out that standard free energy change. Remember that a change in free energy is a Delta G standard again. So I'm just solving for that notch. What's the formula that has these three values in it? There's only one of them and that's this Delta G equals ne ne negative NF E cell. Now just know when you're using this formula, the delta G that you're going to get is always going to be in joules. But we have the N value. We know that that's two, two moles. We have the E cell value. They did say that it was a positive 0 0.434 volts. But now the thing is they didn't give me an F value, but the F value which is called Faraday's constant, it's a constant number. The number is 96,485. The units for Faraday's constant is Coulomb per mole. But now if you're asking the question of how are these units going to cancel? I have volts, I have Coulombs. Just know that a volt is an easier way of just saying Coulomb per mole. So if I Actually, no, just kidding, not coulomb per mole, it's joule per coulomb. I don't know why I said coulomb per mole. I guess I saw this word mole. Joule per coulomb, but in that case, you have the coulombs that are going to cancel out, and there is your joules. That's why if this is the same as joule per coulomb, that's why you get joules out of here. But let's just plug in the numbers and see what we get, delta G, equals negative. The negative is in the formula. Let's put in those three numbers. We got two times 96,485. And then we have the E cell of 0 0.434. Let's plug it all into the calculator and let's see what we get. Negative two times 96,485 times 0 0.434. 434. And I get roughly 83,748.9. Now, if we were doing sig figs, chances are we're going to go by this because these two moles of electrons, they are standard values, not standard values, but they're, um, they don't have any um, precision, right? It's just a standard two. So I will use three sig figs here. So the delta G would be a negative 83700, but that's in joules. The answer wanted it in kilojoules, but that's okay. I could go from joules to kilojoules. Joules to kilojoules, we always just divide by 1,000. Similarly, just take the decimal, move it over to the left three times. So this would be negative 83.7, and that is your free energy change, your delta G. And let's box that off. That is our answer. And what do you think? 
Okay. Thank you for viewing the video, and I hope this helped. Let me know in the comments. Love helping you guys out. We have thousands of videos on the channel at this present moment. We have three subjects. We have chemistry, math, and physics. And go check them out. Maybe we can help you in those subjects as well. My brother and I, we truly do appreciate you guys. And I hope you're all having a great day. Keep studying hard. Bye-bye.